They started as just a bunch of friends in a treehouse, looking up to their idols who had come before them. But when disaster struck and an evil monstrosity threatened to destroy the world, those friends discovered that heroes can come from the most humble of beginnings. They traveled the world to battle that monster, facing obstacles and sacrifices every step of the way. It wasn't easy, but they had each other. And working together, they struck it down and saved everyone. Minecraft Story Mode Season 2 is the next installment in Telltale's adventure game spin on the Minecraft universe. It tells fictionalized stories about characters living within a Minecraft world, which you can influence with your choices. I mean, who knows Ruben better than Jesse, right? Yeah. Talk about knowledgeable casting. So far, just the first episode has been released of season two, with four more coming in the next few months. Oh, Bajo, I love good stories, and I love the Minecraft world, so this combination is just great. And it does a really good job of capturing the idea of what it would be like to live in a video game, which is so cool to me. Sea Lantern, nice. Living the dream. When you begin, you can choose to quickly recreate your choices from Season 1 by picking between some simple options. Although they don't really mean much if you haven't played through those storylines. Context is key. You will definitely get the most out of this if you've played through the first season, but it's not completely necessary. While some characters do make a reappearance, Season 2 introduces new characters and adventures that are quite far removed from Season 1. But you do resume your role as Jesse, the unassuming hero who saved the world. Just like Season 1, you can choose Jesse's appearance and gender. It always rocks to be able to make your in-game character look a little bit more like you. Oh, I'm completely the opposite. I like making my characters look as different as possible. Either way, it's great you can choose. They have made some changes to the gameplay as well, especially in the combat. Affirmative. In Season 1, combat was extremely basic, just swinging your weapon at the right time. This time around, you have a stamina bar which depletes as you move and attack, so you'll need to dodge attacks by rolling left or right. Combat has always been one of the weaker parts of these games, and this rejig was actually a step back for me. By trying to make it more sophisticated, they also lengthened fights, which extends an unenjoyable part of the game. And the new fighting style wasn't exciting enough to make up for it. It's kind of like adding just a little bit of cordial to your water to try and spice it up, but then it's really watered down and it tastes gross and you would have just rather drink water anyway. Mm -mm. Brad, that's a weird analogy, but I totally agree. Sometimes too little of a good thing can be a bad thing. Open areas have also been made larger with more interactive points. This is in stark contrast with Season 1, which had seemingly deliberately small and short open areas. Walking around in Telltale games has always been a bit slow and clunky. So, the bigger and more densely populated the area, the more frustrating it is to walk around. In this game, I don't think bigger is better. I much preferred how they did it in Season 1. It was more straightforward. Absolutely. I just tried to avoid it as much as possible. Season 2 begins with you helping citizens of Beacon Town, but I just bypassed all of it and basically helped no one because it was too cumbersome. Sorry, mates, you're on your own. Not sure if I have time, but I'll see what I can do. Although, I did make this pretty cool Darren statue. My head's a little small, don't you think? Oh, well, Darren, you can't bring proportion into this. It's art! Oh, oh, oh. Season 2 has some cool cameos. Famous Minecraft content creators like Stampy Cat and Stacy Plays make an appearance as Beacon Town citizens who need help banking. Hello, Jesse. We heard about this founding day celebration of yours and we thought we'd make some sweets. I thought that was a nice touch for hardcore Minecraft fans. Oh, totally. I still didn't help them, though. Unlike Season 1, Season 2 notifies you when you've made a decision that significantly changes the path of your story. A notification pops up telling you when this happens, which makes you hyper aware of the decision you just made. Especially when you made a decision flippantly and then all of a sudden it turns out to be important. And these games are all about choice. Season 2 also has moments where it presents you a very clear fork in the road. Do you use stealth to try to sneak your way in? Or try to fight head on? But I didn't feel like these decisions had much at stake, and for a Telltale game, that's a bit tame. <gasps> Telltale? More like Tame Tell? <laughs> uh, you are both quite correct. Uh, there is a distinct feeling that everything will be fine in the end, which is comforting, but it doesn't make for a very good decision based game. It's just so weak. I was okay with that. I enjoyed just being along for the ride, you know, just happy to be here. And I liked the characters enough that I wanted to see their story play out. I'm giving Minecraft Story Mode Season 2, Episode 1, three and a half out of five rubber chickens. I think the coolest part about this game is just seeing Minecraft things applied in a different way. It's like an interactive Minecraft movie. I'm going to give it three out of five rubber chickens. <laughs>